White Coolies, dedicated to those nurses who did not return. Sister Davis. Missing. Sister Hempstead. Missing. Sister Gardam. Missing. Sister Raymond. Missing. Sister Jeffrey. Here. For a few days after Charlie Chaplin's talk to us in the guardhouse, we speculated madly about what, if anything, the something good would be that he'd promised us. However, we soon exhausted that topic of conversation as nothing appeared. We have a new horror to contend with now. Rats and spiders. Oh, it's hotter than ever tonight. I think we feel it more since we've had to move up to make room for the last arrivals. The light out and no moon. The heat seems to choke you. I hate these dark nights too, Jenny. It wouldn't bring all the wogs in the world flying around. It would be nice to leave a light burning. <laughs> Hang on, Blanche. I'm about to turn over. Right here, Jenny. Oh, careful. Oh, I'm sorry to disturb everyone. You're not disturbing me, old horse. I'll just settle down on my good ear, and that'll be that. Oh, I think I'll have to go out and sleep on one of the tables or go down to the shelter shed. Oh, what's going on in there? Sounds like a sewing circle. Oh, Jeff, it's so blasted hot, none of us can get to sleep. Uh, I think I'll get a drink of water. Anyone else want one? Oh! Good heavens, what's the... Who is it? What's the matter? What did you say? What well, is the matter in uh, here? Something ran it? over my neck. What is it? I don't know. It, it felt fairy. Oh, it was horrible. It was probably Midnight the Cat. He's so black you wouldn't see him. No, it wasn't the cat. It wasn't as big. And, and it had funny little feet. Oh, oh, oh there it is again. He's going your way this time. Oh, we'd better get a light. Oh, it went over me then. I, I think I know what it is. Oh, what, Blanche? Rats. What? Rats! Oh, no, I couldn't bear it. Oh, here, let's have a look. What in the name of all that's wonderful's going on? Unless well, something keeps running over our legs. Look, there it is. Oh, 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 no. oh, no. It is a rat, it's big as a kitten. Oh, there it goes. It's just jumping off the shelf and got underneath. Oh, I can't have it. It's all here. Oh, this is nice. Oh, they must seem to have several. Well, what are we going to do? Well, nothing we can do. It's it's just another thing we'll have to put up with and get used to. Oh, I couldn't ever get used to rats. Not running over me. Well, you'll have to, dear, for tonight anyway. Maybe they're only passing through. Oh. Well, I just wish they wouldn't pass over me. Oh, go away, you oh, rats. Wow. Oh. Well, we just can't stand around all night. As Jeff says, we'll have to put up with them for the night and see if we can do oh. anything about them tomorrow. Nothing was done about them. The Japs just ignored our request for something to get rid of them, so now we're quite resigned to them, and they race over us all night long. Midnight does his best, but insists on leaving carcasses on our shelves, usually putting them in our few belongings and clothing oddments. Ioli had a horrible experience one night. <coughs> What's that? What a funny noise. What is it? It seems to be under my pillow. It is under my pillow. I'm going to shake it. Oh, I don't know what it could be. Uh, moonlight tonight. I could see whatever it is. I could read by it. Uh, it doesn't seem to be anything. Sure, I heard something. <laughs> oh, well, go away. Wait. Don't come near me, please. Don't let it come near me. Oh, I, oh I've got to get out of the net. Go in the net with me. Oh, I, oh, I've got to get out. What? Who's that? It's me, Ioli. There's a spider as big as my hand in the net with me. Oh, I can't oh, get out. Ioli. Here, wait a minute. 
minute. I'll help you. <laughs> now, wait, wait. Look, over this way. Come on, now. <laughs> Come on. There. Oh, I owe you. Are you all right? Oh, there. <laughs> it's all right, I think now. so. Oh. <laughs> I'm terrified of them. You poor thing. Oh. Look, where will you sleep now? You can't go back under the net. It might still be there. I'll, I'll go outside on one of the tables. Oh. I'm sorry I woke you up, Jenny. Oh, don't be silly. That's all right. If it happened to me, I'd have screamed the place down. Oh. Gee, I hope you can sleep out there. Oh. I'll be fine now. How on earth did it get under the net? You usually roll it under you, don't you? Oh, it may have been on my pillow, Jeff. Oh, I've never seen such a ghastly thing. It was huge. When it ran up the inside of the net, it, it looked as big as Toby. Oh, loathsome things. They give me the creeps. Oh, Jeff, I can still see it. Oh, I think I'll see it till my dying day. My hat. Look at that. What? Over there on Mavis Hannah's bed space. Look, right opposite. What is it? Your spider. Huh? Oh, it is as big as your hand, I only. <gasps> Quick, go out and get a piece of wood. Huh? Uh, a piece of wood, yes. I'll snap out of it. It's broad daylight and it can't hurt you. Uh, a piece of wood. Quick, it's moving away. Uh, I, I won't be Well, moving. hurry up. It'll get away. Ioli was as quick as she could be, but the thing disappeared before she could get back with a piece of wood to kill it, so it's still there at large. Today, I was so hungry I could hardly walk. The first time it's hit me like this. Jeff, have you got any rice left? Uh, not one grain. I was going to ask you. Oh, I literally haven't a thing we could eat. All the tins are empty. Rice and sugar and corn. It's all gone. I've never felt like this before. I just can't drag one leg after the other. I'm going inside to lie in my bed space. I'm just going to flop here on my part of the table. And pray for something to eat. Oh, death. <laughs> well, I know which is the most likely to happen to you. <laughs> What's the matter, Jeff? Hello, Trot. I feel terrible. Well, that's the first time I've heard you admit it. Jeff, I know it's not very helpful to say so, but you don't look too good. Oh, well, that makes me feel fine. The trouble is, I, I only and I are trying to recuperate after that wretched attack of dengue fever. We literally haven't one bit of food left. I think everyone's pretty short. Wouldn't it be wonderful not to feel everlastingly hungry? <coughs> oh. oh, if only we had some steak and eggs or something like oh, that. Oh, go away, Trot, dear. Let me suffer in peace. Poor you. I know just how you feel. Oh, hello, Jeff. Taking it easy. No, Jenny, she's not. She doesn't feel quite the thing. Or... Oh, I'm sorry, oh. Jeff. What's the trouble? Hunger. Oh, dear. And I haven't got a skerrick of anything I can give you. I know we're all in the same boat. We must get some rations today, surely. Oh, come on, Jenny. I think Jeff wants to be left alone. As I lay there, visions of plump roast chicken, all golden brown, kept floating before my eyes. But somehow, it didn't help any this time. And really, the only thing that seemed to be left was to die. Only I wished I'd hurry up and get on with it. At about midday, Blanche came to me full of excitement. Jeff! Jeff! Yes, Blanche? I've got good news for you. Well, unless it's about food, I'm not interested. It is about food. Rations have arrived. Oh. Really? Yes, there's, there's rice, corn, sugar, salt, curry powder and oil. Oh, not all that. Yes. Oh, all in very tiny quantities, uh, but it is food. Oh, I must go and get our rations. Ioli's nearly dead with hunger, too. 
Well, if I could stagger that far. You don't have to worry about that old thing. Trot and Jenny are collecting it for both of you. They'll be here in a minute. Oh, how wonderful. I only, I only. There are rations on the way. We can have a meal in a minute. Oh, saved in the nick of time. I'm going to start my fire. I'll come with you and get house going. We cooked a little rice and ate it and felt better very quickly. It's an amazing thing, that, how quickly we do pull up even on tiny morsels of food. It's just as well, because it doesn't look as if we're ever going to get a square meal again as long as we're in this awful place. We've just had further inquiries about the 32 of us by Charlie Chaplin, so we can kid ourselves again that our ship is on the horizon. Another new innovation since the military took us over is that we've been waved twice. I don't see the point of weighing us, really, do you, Jen? No, I don't. We're certainly soup-like. I'm seven stone three. None of us weigh much over seven stone. Blanche, I'll bet. <coughs> Tweedy is the one. She was 13 stone. She's certainly fine down. She just touches seven now. Oh, Lord. Doesn't help, really, to know that we're losing weight. I suppose that's the idea. Try and scare us. Oh, they'll have to do better than that. We don't scare that easily. You know, it's good that we're so thin anyway. Why, Blanche? Well, they may only send a little ship to take us home. And if we're too fat, we mightn't all fit in it. <laughs> <laughs> I think if they sent an Australian surf boat, we'd all fit in it somehow. We'd do anything if we could only get home. been another outbreak of illness in the camp. Nobody quite knows what it is. It attacks very suddenly and makes you feel awful. You run a raging temperature, which in this heat and these conditions is really awfully uncomfortable. Ioli and I both got whatever it is at the same time. Oh. I've never had so many aches and pains at one time before. <coughs> Every bone in my body hurts. We're a great help to each other. Both getting it at the same time. It means someone else has to look after us. Oh, dear, I feel lightheaded. Well, naturally, with a temperature like the one you've got, it's a wonder you're coherent at all. I'm just floating about in a pink haze. I'm looking forward to that development. <laughs> I'm just thrashing about on hard boards. Well, how are you feeling, you two? Oh, hello, Shorty. We feel pretty cheap. What's that you've got? It's your rice. Oh, oh, no, no, I couldn't eat anything. My throat's on fire. All I want is a drink of water. You've got to eat now. If you don't, Jeff, you know what'll happen. But, Shorty... No buts about it. Now, sit up a bit and get this down. Oh, is that how you talk to all your patients, <coughs> Sister Shorty? Only when they're unreasonable. Oh, what about the old saw that says, feed a cold, starve a fever? It doesn't say that at all. It says if you feed a cold, you'll have to starve a fever. Well, then you shouldn't be feeding us. Oh, I don't believe in old wives' tales. Anyway, you haven't got colds. Good heavens. Well, what's up? Oh, that's funny. I didn't have that a minute ago. At least I don't think I did. Well, I have what? Look, I've produced the most glorious-looking rash. Here, let's see. Oh, you have too. Look at it. Comes up as you watch it. It's like glorious technicolor. As if you look like the rosy dawn. Have you got it, Ioli? I don't think so. No. No enough sign. Oh, but there's hope for me yet. Well, uh, I'd better report it to Dr. McDowell. Oh. Goodness knows what you've gone and got. Oh, dear. 
Oh, I wish you could see yourself, Chip. You're glowing like a taillight. I can see it on my arms and legs. It's certainly violent. Oh, we do have a variety of very odd complaints in this part of the world. Gosh, if only we had as great a variety of treatments. It's awful being sick under these conditions. It's so uncomfortable lying all day and night on hard wooden boards with nothing underneath for protection. I... You know, Jeff, I think we ought to employ somebody to cook our rice for us for a week while we get over this. Well, that'd be a change. Someone working for us instead of us working for them. Well, it's not fair to be a drag on the others. They've got enough to do without looking after us for nothing. I know it's been worrying me. Oh, we'll tee something up. They're in here, Dr. McDowell. Oh, dear, I don't know where we'll put them if they have to go into hospital. We're crowded out now as it is. Here comes Dr. Mattel. Let's get ready to show him a rash. Jeff. What's the matter? Well, it's gone. What? <laughs> you can't do this. Now, let's have a look at this marvellous rash that you're sporting, Sister. Well, um, a, a doctor, um, um, Sister Harper says it's gone. When did it go? Well, I didn't notice, Doctor. We were just talking and I looked at Jeff when we heard you coming and it had gone. Has your temperature dropped, sister? Well, I do feel a bit cooler. Well, if it shows up again, let me know. And I'll see if I can get here more quickly so that I can see it in action. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. McDowell. Well, Jeff, you're a fraud. Here was I painting a vivid picture of what you look like and you haven't got anything at all. But I did have it. You saw it. Thank heavens you did, otherwise I'd be fearing for my sanity. Oh. Have you finished your rice, Iolly? Yes, thank you, Shorty. Now see if you can get a bit of sleep. And don't just lie there talking all the afternoon. No, we won't. We got over the attack of whatever it was and had someone cook for us for a few days, which has left us short of our hard-earned money. Still, it was worth it. And now we're back working full-time. We had another visitation today. I was doing bathroom squad chores, pulling water up from a well, dragging it into the bathroom and tossing it on the floor, while Steady and Shorty scraped away with a bundle of old sticks bound together to try to clean the place up a bit. Come over this way a bit, Shorty. This is an awful part. <laughs> Can't seem to make... Impression on it with the sticks. Oh, I'd like to get this with a deck scrubber and a couple of gallons of disinfectant. Mm, I'd like to get to myself with a deck scrubber and a drop of disinfectant. Where would you like this lot? Oh, uh, over this side, Jeff. Right. Oh, look out. Oh, oh. Quick, Shorty, start uh, scrubbing before it all runs away. Right. How much more water do you think we'll need? Oh, another couple of lots, Jeff. We ought to throw the rinsing water over ourselves first. <clears throat> Not a bad idea. Hey, you two. Come on and have a look at this. What is it? Quick! What is it? The Emperor of Japan? Look at those two strange characters. Who do you suppose they'd be? Well, they're nips. For Pete's sake, they're Japanese nurses. Oh, will you... Oh, gee, don't they look awful in those uniforms? Look at those long white dresses, almost to their ankles. And will you get an eyeful of the peculiar hats? Aren't they dainty? Look at them holding hankies to little flat noses. Ah, <laughs> oh, oh, come on, Steady. I'd rather scrub floors than look at them. Me too. I think they scream. They're coming over this way. I just hope they come in here. We've got a lovely, sloshy bit of muddy water. And this homemade scrubbing brush of ours does splash a lot now, doesn't it, Shorty? It sure does. <laughs> it's something awful. Well, I think you're going to have your fun. They're coming over. Now, watch me. I shall bow till I crack. Ooh. Here they come. Right. You're right. Yep. Get ready for a good splash, Shorty. All right. Morning. Will you step right this way for a face-lifting mud bath? <laughs> oh. Well, what do you know? I stood aside, 
did my piece nobly for these daughters of Nippo, but no, they'd have none of me. I'll Ooh. bet that breaks your heart. Yeah. Oh, oh, it does. They merely held their handkerchiefs a little more firmly to their noses, took a wide circle of me, and now, I believe, are walking towards the kitchen. The kitchen? Yeah. Well, now, uh, I hope there's a pile of stinking bringles to welcome them. <laughs> I wonder what we really look like. Two outsiders, I mean. It's a pretty scraggy bunch, I'd think. Mm, we must do. Do you think we smell? Uh, well, uh, I, it wouldn't surprise me if we were a bit high. <sighs> oh, well. Oh, let's get on with it. Those two nurses must have been impressed with the mixture of nationalities we now have here in the camp. There are English, Scottish, Irish, American, Canadian, New Zealand, South African, Dutch, French, German, Russian, Austrian, Swiss, Latvian, Icelandic, Indian, Singalese, Chinese, Siamese, Malay, Javanese, Balinese, Indonesian, Indo-Dutch, Eurasian, and us. All would rather be here behind barbed wire sweating it out in a prison camp than be with the Japanese. For the Nips are our common enemy. We are all sad today. We lost a very good little friend. I didn't know until this morning when I went back into the hut for something. Now... Where did I leave that? Oh, oh hello, Shorty. <laughs> what are you doing sitting on the floor? He died, Jeff. He died in my arms. Shorty. Not Toby. <laughs> Poor little pup. He didn't have much for life. He was always such a gay little fellow. Even when he was sick, he still wagged his tail when I came, came near him. And, and now he's dead. Toby. I was hoping he'd last the distance. I want to take him home and show him what a real home is like for little pup. Oh, Shorty. What can I say? Yeah. Only I could have given him a little more to eat. Maybe he wouldn't have died. You can't blame yourself, old thing. You did your best. Oh, we'll all miss him. But it's worse for you. He was your little dog. I remember when he could speak only Dutch. And what a little time it took him to learn English. He was very intelligent. Come on, you can't stay here nursing him like that, Shorty. Jeff, would, would you help me dig his grave? He loved you. Of course I will. What is it that I read once? Give your heart to a dog to tear. Oh, Jeff, I'm going to miss him. I'm going to miss him terribly. <laughs> We're all going to miss little Toby, quite dreadfully. He always seemed such a brave little dog. His little tail held high like a small flag. His spirit as strong as a lion. I hope his... Running and rolling among the stars now. Never hungry, never lonely. Running free with Orion. Listen again for a further episode of this true story of Australian women at war. White Coolies is based on the diary written secretly in a Japanese prison camp by Sister Betty Jeffrey, especially adapted for radio by Gwen Friend, and produced by Fifi Bandard for Australasian Radio Productions. <laughs>